So Lloyd Van Eden Petersman is joining us from Corteva to talk about the deep-seeded seed canola trials. Uh, it focuses on no. Nope. Tabor Home <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, the trials are focused on seed size, seeding rate, and seeding depth. So if you want to get a little into it, I'll let sure. you go. Good afternoon. Thanks for the invite. Uh, it was a last minute for me. Doug Moisey, which would be the Corteva seed agronomist, who asked uh, me, gave me a call last night that he could not be here. I am a sales agronomist with Tabor Home and Farm. We would be a retailer for Pioneer Seed. Uh, it was about two weeks ago that Carlo gave us a tour of the site as to what's going on here, and now I'm speaking. So if you have real deep questions, he's the guy to ask. So uh, what this would be a year one of a three-year uh, project that Corteva and Farming Smarter are doing, uh, having to do with, as alluded to earlier, uh, different seed size, different uh, seeding depths, and uh, looking at the emergence, ultimately, yield. So how many here in this group are canola growers? Okay, small half. Okay. So what's the number one thing you're looking for when you grow canola? Viable seed. Viable seed. Probably in the end you're looking for yield, right? Yeah. So we've always targeted to seed 5 pounds an acre and you get the yield out of it what you get. But look at the seed that we're getting today. The seed size is varying from a probably high threes, three grams per thousand seeds, upwards to eight. Some might even have experience seeding seed bigger than eight grams per thousand. Um, that comes out of a number of different factors. If you look at uh, canola practices in the 90s and 2000s, everything was seeded with a box drill, everything was um, swathed. Today we are straight cutting a lot of our seed. We are late swathing our seed. We're encouraged to leave it well past the 40-45% seed color change into the 80 or 90% seed color change, allowing all the seeds to size up. Uh, what that does give you is a real wide range of seed, uh, seed sizing. Big seeds, little seeds, and everything in between. Uh, seed companies are struggling. How do we deal with this? What do we do about this? Do we start separating it into small seed, middle seed, big seed? Then we have growers that perhaps only want big seed. We only have only want small seed. Don't want any of that other stuff. If we seed eight pound, eight gram seed, we want replacement seed or free seed to make up for it, so we can still seed at the six or seven or eight pounds an acre. So the companies like Corteva are looking as is there a difference between big seed, larger seed, and small seed in terms of um, vigor, emergence, survivability, um, biomass? Uh, canola plant has to gather sunshine, has to photo, uh, use the sunshine photosynthesize to create energy. A plant that covers the ground sooner masks out the weeds. It is a bit, has the ability to take on sunshine, convert it to energy, and, and thus grow the plant sooner. Uh, a thin stand right from the beginning is going to struggle. You've got insect feeding, you've got weed competitions. It takes a lot longer for that one to go. Can we make any connections between large seed and small seed? Probably not at this time. They'll be working on that further. Early in the 90s, they already had determined that large seed does have, uh, seem to have more better emergence, but generally we've used 50 or 60 percent as the number for what number of seeds we put in the ground, how many of them make it, we're looking at about 50 or 60 percent emergence. Can we narrow that down? Is that less in big seed? Is that more in small seed? Do we really have to increase our seeding rates when we're going to seven and a half or eight gram seed sizing? So what do you have a trial here? We have 4.9 gram seed, We've got seed that's 6.2 and seed on that side that's 7.9. So considerably larger seed. Uh, the seed is replicated over a number of spots here, but seeded at three quarter inch or an inch and a half deep. And the other one is changing seeding rates. So four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half pounds an acre. So again, industry standard has always been seeding at about five pounds an acre. A bag of seed was 50 pounds, a bag of seed covers 10 acres. If you're getting big seed, do we need to increase our seeding rates or can we get away with putting less seed in the ground? Can we get away with perhaps putting them a little deeper where the moisture is? Uh, if we can get a plant that comes up out of the ground sooner, I guess I'll back up a little quick here. 
I am, uh, my comfort zone would be more in growing corn. I prefer that. Canola to me is a weed for the three years that you're not growing corn. However, uh, in corn, if you can get that crop out of the ground sooner, it's going to be more vigorous. It's going to canopy over. It's going to close in the rows sooner. It'll get us to a tassel sooner and then allow us to be ahead of the killing frost in September. Canola is really not a lot different. If we can do things to get it to flower three days earlier, that's considerable. If we can get it to be mature a day or two ahead of everything else, that's considerable gains. If we can get it to canopy over ahead of uh, and close in before the weeds come, that's a gain as well. So those are things that are being measured here. So the Farming Smarter team has uh, seeded the canola, as indicated, two different depths, has uh, adjusted the seeding rate, and we've used the same batch of seed, but seeded, uh, separated out the small seed, the middle-sized seed, and the, the larger seed. And they will be following this through for uh, three years, kind of a, a trial here. Lethbridge has been chosen because our conditions can typically be some of the harshest. Uh, we seed early, we have Cold, uh, cold nights, we have uh, late frosts, uh, but a lot of things that you can uh, observe here in, in Alberta in a, in a small area. And the team at Farming Smarter can uh, do a good job of monitoring that, measuring for biomass, uh, the, the leaf, the amount of leaf material that's there, and then following this through to yield. Um, obviously by putting more seed down, seeding higher rates, you're gonna get more plants a thicker stand. The question is, is the percentage any better? If you're losing, I'm just going to take some numbers here, if you're losing up to 20% of your seed in small seed and only 15% in larger seed, you don't have to increase your seeding rate as much as you may think if you're seeding big seed. So it's not about just putting more seed down, it's how many of them are emerging, how many of them are, in, are viable plants and going to return you with yield. Any questions to this point? In canola, seeding canola, it's not about pounds, it's about placement. Okay. So what kinds of things, the, the comment here was, it's not about pounds, it's about placement. What kinds of things have we done to increase our, our to, to better our placement over the last 20 years? Precision drills. Precision drills. Better depth control. But, uh, that's what it is, depth control. Depth control. Uh, in the importance of getting seed into moisture where you can. Slowing down. Slowing down, making every seed count. Again, I go back, put my corn hat on. You're gonna, that's exactly the things you do in corn, is you're only seeding 34,000 seeds an acre, make every one count. If you only have 26,000 of those at harvest, you know your yield cap potential is down. Canola's not a lot different. You throw a lot of seed in the ground and hope some of it takes, or put every seed where it needs to be, uh, we see an increase in number of precision drills, number of acres being seeded with precision drills over the area. You can lower your seeding rate. You can perhaps you perhaps wait for moisture and seed right into the moisture. Um, in the area too, we often will play with sinking the uh, seed down a little bit further. Three quarter inches, you know that's too dry. If you can put that below an inch or to an inch and a half, can we get away with that? Uh, I think if you look at some of the results, Canola coming at an inch and a half or two inches is doing okay. It, it, has, has, it depends on the soil texture and uh, like this year, because my crop was powdery, we actually put it down to inch and a quarter, an inch and a half, and yeah. the top was just loose fluff and it came true. So putting it into good soil, and in every soil is different but, but as well. You cannot do that every year. No. It's just a, just a, a really dry powder on top. Of it. Yeah. Do you know what the germ was on this? 80, 90, you know? I'm, I'm just going to say it would have been over 85. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon? Otherwise, it doesn't get sold if it is too low. Yeah, no, it would have been seed that we would have used in the area for uh, selling commercial seed as well. So. If canola breeders could incorporate a more frost tolerant canola, you would see something. Yeah. You could seed earlier. Every year around mid a long weekend, we get hit with a frost. It sets back. Yeah. Except for volunteer canola, they can survive by his toy. Multiply that. Yeah. yeah. So, any further questions or comments? How many year trial was this? This is year one of three. This is year two. Two of three or two yes, of two of three? Okay. <laughs>
Just a little history on the price of canola seed. 1992, we bought canola seed for $65 a bag. That was, that was before the, uh, the open, the, that was open pollinated, before the hybrid uh, side of things, yeah. Good old days. The good old days. So basically the, the research is to see if there's a difference in the viability of the seed based on seed size at this point. Because like, I mean, as far as seeding goes, if, like with conventional seeding, you, like it's, it's your bulk that changes, or your, your, yeah. Um, but with the monosem, you're simulating anyway, so it wouldn't matter what your seed size is, right? Okay, so uh, I'll back up a little bit. It's hard to measure viability because uh, that encompasses a lot of things. So you're looking for emergence, what percentage is emerging, which would also allow you to measure mortality. If you're seeding um, in this trial here, the small seed at four and a half pounds is about 100 seeds per meter squared. The large seed at six and a half pounds, so the high rate, is that same 100 seeds per meter. So if you're comparing seed versus number of seeds versus number of seeds, there's a pretty big spread in that. So you got to measure mortality. How many of the seeds did not make it out of the ground? The ones that did, if they can canopy over sooner, and they're they're more, um, yeah. Again, I wouldn't want to use the word uh, lush, more vigorous. That's kind of a, a nice term, but it's hard to measure. In the end, you're looking at yield, right? So if I'm at five plants per meter. And that's yielding the same as uh, the small seed seeded at six pounds or six and a half. I know what I can do next year if I'm given a bag of big seed or what adjustments I can make for small seed. So, anything else? Was Thank you. This trial was all the same variety, same hybrid? Yeah. Same uh, seed lot. Same seed lot. Yeah. Okay. So they split yeah. it all up. What are you hearing? Well, you hear a lot about, a lot of complaints about the seed this year that came from last year's dry condition, as if there's no vigor there. There are a lot of fields with just a few new plant and a spindly stem coming up. Are you seeing that? It seems to uh, go along with, with some varieties. Yeah. Yeah. I have careful what I see on that I think they are working hard to figure out what's behind that is it perhaps the seed but last year's environmental conditions were very difficult this year's spring seeding wasn't wasn't was less than ideal as well so we see some variable emergence I would have a hard time pinning it on a seed company or a seed variety at this time but the combination of last year's harsh conditions for growing corn a uh, growing canola seed and this year's spring emergence conditions probably led to some very variation within the fields. There was one grower who had a mini bag of old seed left. Seeded it, finished it, switched to the same, just a different year from last year's seed. Same variety, a clear line, day and night. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to respond other than you probably should have kept more seed from last year, but that's hindsight too, and uh, as a seed seller, I don't advise holding on to seed either. It does lose its germ, but yeah. Was that a different seed size? Because that'd be interesting. I don't, I do not know. But I'd like to know that now. <laughs> <laughs>